Good evening, Bethlehem and saints of God. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, or maybe even good night at whatever time you're tuning into our Wednesday Zoom Bible study. This will be the final Wednesday Zoom Bible study of the year. And I want to welcome you to tonight's uh, study. My name is Pastor Michael Eaton. I serve as the pastor of the Bethlehem Baptist Church here in Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, for those of you who do not know me. And before we get in our service tonight, our Bible study, I want to take this opportunity uh, to extend an invitation for those who have gone all of 2022 in Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, and do not have a church home. We want to make sure that you start the new year out right in the church this coming Sunday. We want to invite you to the Bethlehem Baptist Church. We're located right here in Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. We're located at 311 North Dunbar. Again, we're located at 311 North Dunbar. And we'd love to see your face in this place on the first Sunday of the new year, which is this coming Sunday. So once you come and visit us, it's a one-hour service. Bring a family member or a friend. And if you'd like to get to know us before you join us this coming Sunday, visit our website at www.heargodsword at Bethlehem.com. Again, our website is www.heargodsword at Bethlehem.com, all spelled out. Get to know us there. And once you get to know us, scroll to the bottom of the page there, click the Facebook tab, the Instagram tab, the Twitter tab, the LinkedIn tab, and follow or friend us in what I call Cyber Church. We have many in our Cyber Church family, but we want you to be a part of that. But ultimately, we want to see your face in this place this coming Sunday at the 11 a.m. Sunday, the first Sunday of the new year. Tonight, you've joined us in our Zoom Bible study, which is meant to be a time from 6 p.m. to 6.40. However, we allow the Holy Spirit to take the time and use it as he would. But over my shoulder is the structure of tonight's uh, program. We're going to have an opening prayer, the announcements, the reading of the word, the introduction video, the Bible study itself, the invitation, and the benediction. So let's go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to come and open up your word and study your word that we might be doers of your word and not just hearers. We don't take it lightly, Father, that this is the last study of the new year, and we want you to work and move in mighty and awesome ways by the power of your Holy Spirit, teaching through me and to those who are listening, Father. We pray, Lord, that you work in mighty and awesome ways in the same that you have throughout this year, Father. Speak now, for your people need to hear from you. Speak now, Father, for we need to hear a word from the Lord and not just a preacher, Father. So we give ourselves over to you. Forgive us of our sins. Wash us and cleanse us that we might be in right fellowship with you, that you may be able to speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. And praise the Lord. Amen. And praise the Lord. A few announcements. First of all, I just want to thank those who gave uh, to the pastor and wife during the Christmas holiday. I want to thank you. You don't always have to be nice. Um, and uh, But I just want to say thank you to Bethlehem and all those who gave to us during the Christmas holiday. We really appreciate it. And may God bless you for blessing us in Jesus' name. Uh, one announcement we want to share tonight is that uh, we will be with Ecclesia Church. 
for our watch night service this year. Again, I told you, Bethlehem, I thought I had the night off. I was going to sleep into the new year. You see, when you get old, you want to sleep. When you're young, you don't want to sleep because you feel like you're missing something. But the older I get, you know, I don't have to be up all night. But anyway, my son in the ministry, Pastor Ford, invited me over. And I'm going to come and share with the Ecclesia and surrounding churches uh, on this watch the night service. So please be in prayer uh, for me. And uh, if the Holy Spirit leads you, we want to see you in the service at 10 o'clock on uh, the last day of the new year, the 31st, December 31st, 2022. And we'd love to see you in the place. And uh, if you don't hear from me uh, before that, I want to go ahead and wish you a happy new year. Uh, we're excited about starting a new year, and we will be in our regular services, Bethlehem, on that Sunday or this coming Sunday. Uh, we will be in uh, Bible study or Sunday school at 10. And our New Year service, the first service of the New Year, will be at 11 a.m. service. So we want to we look forward to seeing you if we don't see you before the New Year in Jesus' name. Well, tonight we're going to continue uh, the last message in the series that I've entitled Hope More, Hope More. And uh, as I've been saying throughout all this time, I've been really taking umbrage or kind of upset that this time of the year is the worst time of the year for a lot of people, particularly those that don't have families or friends, or it's a time where suicide is at its highest rate. It's a time of depression and loneliness. And throughout this time, we've been standing on... Uh, Romans chapter 15, verse 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So uh, we've been trying to be uh, hope uh, mongers, if you would, trying to encourage people uh, to not feel alone or be alone, especially Christian folk. You're filled with the power of that Holy Spirit that is, enables all of this in your life. And this sermon series was being preached for Christians to hope more in a hopeless time. We want you to hope more in a hopeless time. And this holiday season, as I've been saying throughout this season, that the whole thing is about joy to the world. The Lord has come. The whole thing is about Emmanuel, which literally means God is with us during the month. And when we celebrate the birth of Christ, uh, God says God is with us. So why feel lonely and alone? So we want to encourage those who've made it through, but looking for the new year. And we want you to go into this new year with the joy that Jesus brought to the world. In Jesus' name. So we're in the last sermon series, and here are a few other messages. You can go to our Facebook or podcast and listen to the whole series for free. Uh, we talked about the God of prospects. See, when you have prospects, you have hope. You see, you go into the new year, you have prospects, you got hope for the new year. We talked about the God of presence, the God of uh, predictability prediction, the God of partiality. Don't you know God favors you, Christian man, Christian woman of God? God favors you, and that's why you should have hope. And he has the power, the God of power. We saw on December the 18th, the God of procreation. I mean, that really spoke to me personally, where God said in his word, he told me that he don't need what's lacking here in this earth. He don't need what's lacking. And a lot of times we get down and depressed because what we don't have, but God says he can work because he doesn't need to move in our life what's lacking. And that really encouraged my heart, mind, and soul. 
And we talked about on this last Sunday, Christmas Sunday, the God of promise. And if you didn't get to hear that because you were traveling or out this last Sunday, I'm going to send that on the Wednesday links in the pastor's text where you can listen to the God of promise. And tonight, the last message in the series is the God of provision, the God of provision. So we're going to uh, talk about the God of provision tonight in Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. Matthew chapter 2, verse 11, the God of provision. I read that in your hearing. It says, on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. They uh, Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I read to you Matthew chapter 20, uh, chapter 2, verse 11. May God only bless the doers of his holy word. Tonight again, or this afternoon, or this morning, whatever time you're listening, we're going to be talking about the God of provision, the God of provision. We're going to talk about the arrival of the wise men or the magi, the, uh, the adoration of the wise men or the magi, and the addition of the wise men or the magi. Um, we want Christians to know tonight that Christians can trust God to be their provider in uncertain times. Christians can trust God to be their provider in uncertain times. Let's take a look at this brief video, and then we'll get to the word. Question, what does the Bible say about the three wise men or magi? In this video, I'll answer that question from a biblical perspective. And afterwards, I'll share some helpful resources. So stick around to the end. We assume that there were three wise men because of the three gifts that were given, gold, incense, and myrrh. However, the Bible does not say that there were only three wise men. There could have been many more. Tradition says that there were three and that their names were Gaspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. But since the Bible does not say, we have no way of knowing whether the tradition is accurate. It is a common misconception that the wise men visited Jesus at the stable on the night of his birth. In fact, the wise men came days, months, or possibly even years later. That is why Matthew chapter 2 verse 11 says the wise men visited and worshipped Jesus in a house, not at a stable. We know that the Magi were wise men from the east, most likely Persia or modern-day Iran. This means that the wise men traveled 800 to 900 miles to see the Christ child. Most likely, the Magi knew of the writings of the prophet Daniel, who in times past had been the chief of the court seers in Persia. Daniel chapter 9 verses 24 through 27 include a prophecy which gives a timeline for the birth of the Messiah. Also, the Magi may have been aware of the prophecy of Balaam, who was from the town of Pethor on the Euphrates River near Persia. In Numbers chapter 24 verse 17, Balaam's prophecy specifically mentions a star coming out of Jacob. The wise men were guided to look for the king of the Jews by miraculous stellar event, the star of Bethlehem, which they called his star in Matthew 2 verse 2. They came to Jerusalem and asked concerning the birth of Christ, and they were directed to Bethlehem. They followed God's guidance joyfully. When they arrived in Bethlehem, they gave costly gifts to Jesus and worshipped him. God warned them in a dream against returning to Herod, so in defiance of the king, they left Judah by another route. So, the Magi were men who, one, read and believed God's word, two, sought Jesus, three, recognized the worth of Christ, four, humbled themselves to worship Jesus, and five, obeyed God rather than men. They were truly wise. Amen. And praise the Lord. As I was looking at this video, I was thinking uh, I could have did a better job in illustrating where the wise men came from. And uh, but uh, Daniel uh, Matthew tells us that they came from the east, and the east is this direction. The east is this direction. And uh, ultimately, I imagine they ultimately came down through here and came up towards Jerusalem. 
And this would have been the place where they would have thought that uh, the great new king was born. They probably would have thought it would have been in a city amongst royalty. So when they went looking, which as he said in the video, they followed the star, uh, I can imagine they thought that their uh, destination was over when they got to the city of Jerusalem, the holy city of Jerusalem. Um, but it wasn't the place. <clears throat> As they interacted with Herod, um, uh, they finally figured out that this was not the place, Jerusalem, right here. And uh, they had to follow the star, as they say, five miles to uh, Bethlehem, a sleepy little town called Bethlehem, which was the town of David. It's the town of David. And uh, we know that the Messiah was become known as the son of David. So uh, they had to go back here. And this is where Jesus was born in Bethlehem. He was born in Bethlehem. And like uh, the young man said in the video, uh, it didn't, the Bible doesn't say when the wise men came again from the east, but it did show that by the time they got there, they were in a house. And uh, we know that they were not back home because you remember uh, this is where they came from, which was Nazareth, where the angel spoke to them. They had to make this 90-mile uh, journey, I told you, that would probably take, well, Jesus and his disciples, they said, would take about four days. But I imagine that Joseph and Mary, a pregnant wife, it would take them uh, a bit longer to make this 90-mile journey to come over here to uh, Bethlehem. Uh, so uh, we know that they did not go back to the house because Herod, if you read the text in context, like I encourage you to do, if I put one little scripture there, you really need to back up the paragraph uh, before and paragraph after. You probably need to read the whole chapter. But if you read the whole chapter, you know Herod got upset because the the magi or the wise men didn't come back and tell him where the king was, which he was threatened, uh, so much so that uh, all the babies would be killed in Bethlehem after the angel came to Joseph and told him to go to, not Nazareth, back home, but to go to Egypt. And Egypt is down here, and I've shown that many times around here down this way looks it would be like look like about 150 mile trip or more from Bethlehem so ah uh, we know that he was not in the house in Nazareth uh, they could have gotten into a house in Bethlehem we, we just don't know we try not to tell you what we don't know what the Bible don't say uh, sometimes we like to do some, what I call some sanctified, using our sanctified imagination, but the Bible does say by the time that they got there, that they were in a house. So it, 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 we know that it wasn't then at the birth of Christ, uh, but it was times later. Some theologians say it may have been even years later. So and what's interesting about this is uh, what the young man said. It, it makes a lot of sense. Where, why would these wise men come from the east? Well, because of Daniel. He was over the Magi there in uh, when uh, they were in captivity uh, in Babylon. So naturally, Daniel talked. He was a great representative of who God was. And naturally, they, like the man said, they must have read Daniel chapter 6. Uh, they were there, and uh, they they must have been Christian or had some Christian influence. We don't know whether they're saved or not, but we do know that they came, and we do know that they worshiped. Hello, somebody. So, but anyway, uh, they came uh, back down here. The spotlight is on now. Man, just like now, we, we celebrated Christmas Sunday, and and it's quiet, you know, after Christmas. Nothing is being said, but the Christmas story continues on in the Bible verse where the Magi have to show up and they have to worship 
in Jesus name. So here we are arriving, the arrival of the wise men uh, on coming to the house. They saw the child with his mother, Mary. It's interesting that thing say that this uh, translation said they saw the child as opposed to the baby. And that's why uh, some theologians spectated. It could have been two years later after they, they had come. Um, but they saw the child and they saw his mother, Mary. And what's interesting here is that uh, Joseph is missing. Where was Joseph at this time? Uh, we know Joseph had not fallen or had passed off the scene because the angel was the one who told Joseph to go down to Egypt. So uh, they arrived and they saw the child and not the baby and the mother. So they arrived. They arrived. And whenever you're following God, you need to go to the place of arrival. Uh, and, 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 and just because God uh, sent you to one place doesn't mean he wants you to stay there forever. And, and I was thinking about that, how much uh, of uh, stuff that uh, uh, Deion Sanders was, was, was people are critical him, of him for leaving Jackson State. Uh, and, and I told my wife they're critical of him because he said God uh, sent him there. And, and many times we think that when God send you to a place, that that's going to be the place that you're going to stay. Well, no, uh, God can move you to another place. Hello, somebody. And this is what, 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 what was going to happen. And I think their arrival was key to their provision for going to Egypt. Because you remember, I hope I'm not getting ahead of myself, but remember, they brought uh, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And the gold was given to kings, naturally. The kings, so naturally they would show up to uh, 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 Jerusalem. That's where, they, that's where kings hide or go to. They didn't think they was going to show up to a king's house in a manger. And, and, and they said the frankincense represented his divinity, and they said the myrrh represented his death. So, so they showed up, and they arrived, and, and I believe that uh, during that time of hiding from Herod, that uh, Mary and Joseph had to live off the gold that was given. That, that's what sponsored the trip Oh, there to... Um, to uh, to Egypt, and I told you that, that there's a place in Cairo, Egypt, called the, the, the Church of the Nativity there, and, and I believe uh, that's what they said they had back in those days. They had, uh, like what we have in our, our cities, major cities, and like New York or San Francisco, like they have a Chinatown. Uh, that's where they said, that was the Cairo, I believe, say that they had a a, a, a Jewish town, if you would, and that's where Jesus was thought to have gone. But in order to get there, they, the wise men had to complete their journey for the Lord because they were bringing God's provision for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords because kings on this earth need go. Hello, somebody. But our God ultimately is the King, King, and Lord of Lords wouldn't need it. But in the physical realm, you you need gold. They said, why did Dion move uh, from Jackson State uh, to up there to Colorado? Well, uh, he was making three hundred thousand at Jackson State, but they said that they gave him a contract for five years for I think they said five point six million a year. Hello, son, Dion probably needed some gold <laughs> to make it because he had some big bills being a former NFL star, and they say ain't no checks like the NFL checks. So I can imagine he could have used that gold to. Uh, to make it in his family. But anyway, oh, they arrived with the gift. And I believe those gifts is what enabled them to make it safely down to Egypt and provide their safe travel after Herod died to come back to 
uh, Nazareth. But, but, but right here, we see that the Magi were from the east. They were from the east. And like I said, I could have put a map uh, to show you where they were. Uh, and I may insert it after I, I, I record this. I may insert a map where they could, probably came from. That's what I'll do. Um, but yeah. Okay, they're not letting me use my arrow here, but if you look at the right-hand side of the screen, there is Babylon over here, and they took them on a different track than I would have. They went up and then came down on the other side, went through Jerusalem and Bethlehem, but this is the track. Look at the red lines on the screen that they took, and on here it says it's 900 miles. The Magi came from and they were looking for who, where is the one who had been born king of the Jews? Because again, we believe that they heard about the king of the Jews from uh, that, that, that Daniel, from Daniel. And then they say, we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. They saw a star. And they followed that star. We knew that star, uh, it was from the Lord. I don't know about all this other astrology stuff uh, that we look at today and trying to read the stars, but we do know that this star was from the Lord because it led them, as I said, uh, looked like maybe over an 800 mile tra trip to find exactly where ah, the baby was or the child was you see there's no uh gps like the lord's gps somebody's looking for direction and i'm not saying that god will send a star but i am saying that he who lacks wisdom let him ask of god as brother james says the half brother of jesus said and, and he will give them the wisdom that they need and if you're seeking direction tonight or uh, seeking direction for the new year, I want to challenge you to pray and seek and ask God to give you the direction that you need for such a time as this. As we go into the new year, we are, uh, most of us are setting goals. Uh, many of us don't do resolutions anymore, but there's nothing wrong with setting goals um, to be better and to do better. And you need to ask God for direction in your life, in your business, in your church, in your ministry, in your marriage. Uh, ask him for direction because he still can guide you in Jesus' name. So we talked about the arrival of the Magi in a message tonight, the God of provision. Now we're going to talk about the adoration of the uh, wise men. They adored him. It says, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Woo! They came all that way to go to church. Woo! Let me say it again. They came all that way to go to church. And, and we know this wasn't a Christmas Sunday, but when they showed up, they worshiped. And that's what we need to do this coming Sunday. We, we need to show up. And, and this is what church is all about. It's about bowing down and worshiping him. We don't come to the church to hear a preacher. If you do, that's very, very sad. You don't come to pray uh, church to uh, hear the choir. If you do, that's, that, that, that's very, very sad. You, your motivation, and this is why church hurt, uh, affects people so much, is that they get to church and allow other people who may have done different things wrong to them or have not been friendly to them and they and they and they stop coming to church the sad thing about it is they don't just stop coming from that that church they stop going to any church all churches are not the same. There's some churches and probably Bethlehem is one of them where we want to come down and bow down to worship Jesus. I've said from the minute the, the pulpit uh, many times that we should talk so much about Jesus that people come to and look in the pulpit to see if Jesus is there. Hello, somebody. 
because that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to bow down and worship him. That's why it's not just one Sunday, but it's every Sunday. Hello, somebody. As a matter of fact, it's every day. Every day we need to bow down and worship him in Jesus' name. The wise men came. Woo! I always say that if you're anywhere near Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, or Garvin County, or driving distance, these people, Ah, they came past driving distance. I, I wish I'd have did the, the math, the 800 miles away. Uh, uh, it's probably what, up past uh, Kansas City from here, 35 to Kansas City. I, I really don't know. Or uh, from here to probably Houston. I, I don't know. But they made that trip to bow down and worship him. In Jesus' name. And sometimes we can't even make a trip around the block to bow down on Sunday. Ooh, meddling. you meddling, preacher. You had to get into the new year. Couldn't even get into the new year without meddling. Yes. Ah, and people just break the curb. But they came to bow down, to worship him. This was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to worship him to be the first to worship. That's what we should be. We should be the first to get to church, to bow down and worship. Not the last, the first to come and bow down and worship him because it's not about us. Uh, church can be so secular because we get in there and we look at the people who's there or we look at the people who's not there and it gets secular when you do that. But when you come to church, just to bow down and worship him. It won't matter if there's 3,300 or three. Well, the Bible says, whoa, that, whoa, if two or three are gathered together in his name, he's in the midst. We come to bow down and worship him. God has always said, ain't into the crowds. He's into himself. These men had the right illustration of what we do on Sundays. We come to bow down and worship him in Jesus' name. And, 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 and this wouldn't be the first time folk bowed to our Savior, to our Lord. Uh, they had an instant on the sea, on that Sea of Galilee. I showed you many times on the map. And old brother Peter walked out and he walked for a moment, but then he took his eyes off Jesus and began to sink. And Jesus Ah, saved Peter and rebuked uh, the winds and the rains. Then after they saw what Jesus did, then they worshiped him and returned. Oh, wait a minute. This is a different time. I, I meant to use another scripture, but this one is from Luke 24 and 11. And the same thing happened on that sea. They saw what he did to that storm and they bowed and they worshiped him. That's what it said. They, they worshiped him. But I, I used Luke uh, 24 and 11. This is after he was resurrected and he was showing himself to his disciples. They didn't know who he was at first, but he was walking with them. And they said, did not our heart burn within in us as we walk along the way? And when they figured out who Jesus was, when Jesus allowed, allowed himself to be revealed, this was after the resurrection. They had, they had not seen him. The women had, had been, to the, uh, uh, been to the grave and word was spreading, but these disciples had not seen him, but, but they, had, they didn't recognize him. But, but once he allowed them to recognize him, they bowed down and worshiped him and they returned. So they were gone. He was up the, near Bethany where uh, old brother Lazarus and, and, and his sister's family was. They turned and they went back to Jerusalem and worshiped. And remember Bethany, I think it's like three, uh, three miles outside of Jerusalem. That's where he saw. And they stayed there at the temple, praising God, worshiping God. Do you worship? Hello, somebody. Do you adore God? You see, that's what Christmas is all about. And that's what Christ's whole ministry was all about. Because he proved who he said, he, who he was, as the Old Testament said, as I shared on Sunday. Oh, he is worthy to be worshipped. Are you worshiping today? You need to go into the new year and say, I'm going to adore him. I'm going to worship him on a daily basis. I'm going to worship him whenever I can. I'm going to worship him. 
because he's an awesome and mighty God. Talking about tonight, as I'm running out of time, that I am saying to God, the God of provision, the God of provision. And this is where we get the provision from, again, the addition of the wise men or the magi. And, and after they fell down in worship, and worship, and let me show this again, and, and Bethlehem, you're real good at this because you don't come worshiping God empty-handed. Let me say it again. You don't come worshiping God empty-handed. That's why a few Sundays ago, um, um, I, I didn't know whether my wife was going to make service or not. And, I, and right before the offering, I had to went back to the back to write my offering check. And Brother Maury had let me know that she was already there because you just cannot show up empty-handed to worship God. Hello, somebody. You're, you see, because your heart is where your finances are. Hello, somebody. That, that's what the Bible says. The root of all kind of evil is money. Hello, somebody. You can't worship God in mammon. So you can't worship God empty-handed especially if he's gave you something to give. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. God knows your heart when you're broke. Uh, I know what it's like to be broke. I've been broke on several occasions in my life, but I, I don't remember too many times where I showed up without an offering. It seems that God always gave me something to give in Jesus' name. And, and it says that they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, I already explained what they say it's supposed to mean. The gold is supposed to be for the kingdom. Being a king, Frankenstein is supposed to be for his divinity. He, he was both God and man, and myrrh was symbolic of his death and, and, and symbolic of himself. And I don't know if I gave the uh, talk about the wrapped in swaddling clothes. Uh, I meant to do some some things because I heard some people say that they were dead men's uh, clothes, but in the Greek, it doesn't seem to signify. It doesn't use that Greek word for dead man's clothes. Uh, so they actually maybe just swaddled him like they do uh, newborns. But, but what was interesting is this is what said. It wasn't the swaddling clothes that said he was born to die. It was this gift from the Magi's that said he was born to die because they used myrrh all to, to, to anoint dead bodies. So, and this is where we get Joe, uh, John chapter 19 and 39. Uh, Nicodemus, uh, who had previously come to Jesus at night, you remember him, he came by night, he also brought a mixture of myrrh. Hello, somebody. It was that myrrh that they would use to anoint his body. So the magi were the ones who signified that Jesus was born to die, not the swaddling clothes. All kids get swaddled, uh, especially in, the, in that day and time, and even in our day and time. Now, all kids get swaddled. But it was this myrrh that they gave was symbolic, was, was symbolic of his death. He was born to die. And, and this is what the magic. So they gave him what he needed, the provision that he needed uh, to escape to Cairo. They, uh, uh, they gave him the signification of what uh, the Old Testament was saying, that Jesus was God with us, that frankincense was his divinity. And they also gave ah, the myrrh, which was symbolic of his death. So God provided him at that time everything that he needed to fulfill his purpose. He was Jehovah Jireh. In Jesus' name. Don't you know God can be Jehovah Jireh to you tonight? Whatever your whatever purpose God has planned for your life, you don't have to worry about the provision. God can send the magi. Hello, somebody. God can provide the money. God can provide his uh, divinity. Hello, somebody. In Jesus' name. I'm running out of time, Bethlehem, and thanks to God. I'm going to have to go ahead and get into uh, the whole reason for Jesus being the reason of the season, it, and it had to do with that myrrh, as I said before. 
that this child was born to take away the sins of the world. And we celebrate uh, not only his birth, but we celebrate his death, burial, and resurrection. For if you're listening at the sound of my voice and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I come tonight wanting to implore you or to uh, motivate you, to encourage you to give your life to Jesus Christ. For, for the Bible also says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And if you're listening to me for the first time, or you may have been listening to me for a long time, but tonight you finally got the meaning that Jesus is the reason for the season. God is with us and he's not just with us, he's with us to take away the sins of the world. If you can believe tonight, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that, that if you believe in him, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Ah, pray this simple prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I come tonight asking you to come into my life for I believe that you are God's only son. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you were buried and race again on the third day. I believe that you are a king. I believe that you are a divinity. And I believe in that myrrh that you died for my sins, was buried and raised again. And I accept you tonight, this morning, this evening, this afternoon, or whatever time I'm for, I accept you into my life. In Jesus' name. Hey, man, if you prayed, that prayer for the first time. I want to see you at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. If you're anywhere near Falls Valley, Oklahoma, or Garvin County, or driving distance, uh, we're not looking for you to come 800 mile distance. If you're that far away, we want you to find the church home where you are. And if you pray that prayer for the first time, the Holy Spirit is put on the inside of you to be that star that guided the Magi. The Holy Spirit is that star on the inside of you, and he will guide you to a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching, Bible-living church where you can grow up in the things of God. But if you're in Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, you don't need to look any further. Follow that star right now to 311 North Dunbar, right here in the heart of Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, 311 North Dunbar. Visit our website at www.heargodsword at Bethlehem.com. There you can get to know us before this Sunday. You could even drop me a note and let me know you pray that prayer, and I'll be waiting to welcome you into the body of Christ right here at Bethlehem Baptist Church. Well, Bethlehem and Saints of God, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. And as always, I like to challenge the Bethlehemites and the saints of God to stay connected, stay connected to God's person, stay connected to God's precepts. And you've got to be in a Bible study, especially if you prayed that prayer for the first time. You need to be in every Bible study you need. You can get in to get grounded in the word of God, stay connected to his precepts and stay connected to his people. That's what church is all about. And if you've experienced church hurt in the past, don't let one church or one person in a church destroy all of the church. In America, especially in America, that's probably uh, three or four or five different, uh, in some communities, 40 different churches on each and every corner. The Holy Spirit, that star can lead you back to the church of God. And we always welcome folk back to Bethlehem Baptist Church. Follow that star. If God is leading you back, we'll welcome you back. Again, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. And let me go ahead and give the benediction. Father God, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify your holy name. You are truly worthy to be praised. We thank you and we ask that you put your hedge of protection around us. Keep us safe as we enter into the new year, as you say the same. Keep us safe from our harm and danger. Until we meet again, the people of God said, 
Amen. And praise the Lord. Amen. The Lord is good. We sure do need.